Easter is upon us. Well, it's upon you. It's already been upon me. That's right. I'm from the future. Wait, no, you're an hour ahead, so that means that you're from the future? Anyway, if none of this makes sense, don't worry about it. We're here to make Bulgarian Easter bread, aka Kuzunak. You can also stuff it with all sorts of goodies, nuts, dried fruit, you name it. Me? I prefer the plain classic. That being said, you know I made a naughty version. Now, I love Kuzunak, but I've never made it before. Easter is in a few days over there, and I didn't have time to rehearse it or anything, so we got one take. But I won't let you guys down, we're doing this. One shot, one kill, like Tom Berenger. Haha, <laughs> let's roll. And here's most of what we're gonna need. Three medium sized eggs, 11 grams or one sachet of instant dry yeast, 50 mils of yogurt, 25 mils of neutral oil, 200 grams of sugar, 600 grams of flour, preferably something with high protein content, 100 grams of softened butter, 200 ml of milk, and traditionally you'd use rum, but I'm using amaretto. You'll see why. We'll need 25 ml of that. Let's start by sifting the flour. This is important, but not for the same reasons that your grandma had. Back then, flour was sifted to get rid of larger particles that would make the dough heavy and hinder the rise of the bread. Modern milling and processing though give us perfect flour. The reason why we sift it is to introduce air which will make the dough light and fluffy. And that is exactly what kuzunak should be. Now let's get our yeast going. Our milk should be warm but not hot. To that we're gonna add the yeast and then give it a little stir just to help it along. It's a good idea to use a wooden spoon every time you're dealing with yeast. It's not particularly fond of metal. Then add 4 tablespoons of our flour. Then give the flour a little mix and add a tablespoon of the sugar as well, and then mix everything together. The reason why we're doing this in stages and we're activating the yeast in advance in the first place is because too much sugar and too much fat can suffocate it. And this recipe has plenty of both. Cover and leave that aside for a minute. In the meantime, we can zest our citrus. We'll use the zest of one whole lemon and one whole orange. It's pretty obvious, but I'm gonna say it. Don't throw it out, you can still juice it. Grate the zest off the orange as well, and put it all aside, we'll use it pretty soon. In a large bowl, crack all three of the eggs, and add all of the sugar. And then, if you for some reason, just like me, don't have a mixer, get ready for a workout. We're gonna beat those together until the mixture becomes light and fluffy, and all the sugar is dissolved. Then we're gonna stop and take a breather, and add our zest, the yogurt, the oil, and the booze. Finally, we're gonna add some vanilla extract or vanilla powder and give everything one last mix. And we're ready to put the dough together. In the large bowl, add the remainder of the flour. Make a little well in the flour where we're gonna pour our yeast. By now, it should be nice and foamy and active. Give it the jiggle test, of course, to make sure. Yep. Pour that into the bowl. And make sure you get every last bit of it. Then mix it in with the flour. And then finally add our egg and sugar mixture. Keep going until all the flour is incorporated and we form a shaggy dough. Depending on the size of the eggs and other factors, you might need to add some extra flour. It's time to knead. This will take about 10 minutes and will happen in two stages. Let me break it down for you. The first two to three minutes is you figuring out if you need more flour and how much exactly. The dough is gonna let you know. To get a rough idea, basically you've added enough flour when the dough stops sticking to the board. Once we achieve a smooth and elastic bowl of dough, it's time to move to the second stage of the kneading, and that is incorporating all of the butter. Pull out the dough and spread some of that softened butter. Then fold in the dough and keep kneading until you feel that all of that butter has been incorporated. Be warned, this is going to be very greasy and very sticky. Then add some more of the butter and keep going. You get the idea. Here's a little technique. You can dimple it with your fingertips, just like you would with a focaccia. Not only are you gonna push the butter into the dough, but all those dimples are gonna trap air as well, which is a good thing. Then fold it in like a little buttery parcel, roll it down from the top, then fold it over from the bottom, and then fold it along the length of the roll. Now that we've incorporated all of the butter, give it one last knead, and finish by forming the parcel again. 
By doing this, we're going to trap a lot of air and form a tight surface, which is going to help with the rise of the dough. Place the dough into a big bowl and cover it with some cling film or a damp cloth. We need to let it proof for a couple hours or until it doubles or triples in size. They say that a switched off oven has the perfect conditions for proving. Remember I told you in the beginning that one of the loaves was going to be naughty? Well, this is what I meant. We'll stuff one of them with some craisins or dried cranberries, marzipan and white chocolate. To prep those, all we need to do is give the chocolate a rough chop and cut up the marzipan into whatever shape or size we want. It's like Play-Doh that you can eat. And trust me, I ate some. You can bake the kozunak in whatever shape or size, but I'm gonna use these two bread forms, which I'm gonna generously butter, as well as add a buttered piece of parchment paper on the bottom. Damn, that was a tongue twister. They're well buttered and they're supposed to be non-stick, but I'm not taking any chances. I've got one try and I'm not gonna fail because of a stuck kozunak. By now, our dough should have at least doubled in size, so it's time to take it out of its bowl. Do yourself a favor and get some oil handy. I didn't do it, but you should. Before you take out the dough, grease up your work surface as well. It's very sticky, and at this point you don't want to be adding any more flour. If you've got a bent scraper, now's the time to take it out. You'll probably need it. Roll up the dough or make it into whatever shape is going to be easier for you to divide. Here you're going to have to make some decisions or just follow mine. Depending on the size and the number of loaves you want, you're going to have to cut accordingly. I'm going to make two loaves with three braids each, so that means six pieces in total. I'm splitting it in the middle first and then dividing that half into three equal parts. To form the individual dough balls for the braids, just fold in all the corners. Then pick it up and hold it between your index finger and your thumb like that while tucking in the bottom. Then divide the other half of the dough and do the same with those pieces, just like making little mozzarella balls. Once we have all the individual dough balls, it's time to roll them out into braids. Just go back and forth while you're slightly pulling to the sides as you do. You can pick it up and let gravity help you as well. Just have fun. Once they're stretched out, it's time to twist them. And the way to do it is grab both ends and twist in opposite directions. This step is very very important and it's key to forming those very desirable threads when you tear into the kuzunak. You'll see what I mean later. And then we just need to braid the loaf. Bottom braid goes over the top one while alternating between the three. You know how it goes. Tuck in the ends and gently but confidently pick up the bread baby and put it into its crib. Ah, oh, this is just wrong. We're gonna bake these. For the other loaf, we're gonna stuff the braids. And to do that, just take the braid and flatten it out. I'm gonna start with placing some of those marzipan pebbles along the length of it. Then sprinkle a handful of the white chocolate chips. And finish with a sprinkling of the cranberries. Then go along the length of it, pinching and closing the whole braid together. And for the naughty twist, get it, the naughty twist, <clears throat> just do the same as before. Braid the three pieces together, tuck the ends under, and transfer into the pan. Cover the loaves with a damp cloth and let them rest in their pans until they double in size again. Meanwhile, we can prepare our toppings. For the wash, combine one egg yolk with a splash of milk. We're gonna brush the loaves with this before they go in the oven. We're also going to use some almond flakes, as well as some sugar and some water. Our kozunak is rested and risen and is ready to be baked. Brush the loaves with the egg wash, sprinkle some almond flakes, as well as some wet sugar. That prevents it from burning and maintains its white appearance. Bake the loaves at 180 degrees Celsius at the bottom rack of your oven for 30 to 40 minutes depending on the size of the loaves. It took these about 35 minutes to become absolutely stunning. Here's the classic plain one with just white sugar on top and my favorite and the stuffed triple almond loaf with amaretto, marzipan and almond flake. But I know what you came here for you perverts. Well let me oblige you. When you see those threads pulling apart like that, you know you've made a good kuzunak. And that is why I like Easter. Roll out.